Hey guys, it's Christine, also known as Ivy Winter. Thank you for joining me for another Disney video. Today's video topic came from an idea that spawned out of the Discord channel. If you guys haven't checked out my Discord channel, I will link it down below. You can go there, meet other people who watch the channel, who love Disney and discuss. Um, so this was born out of discussion of a few different ideas. But I wanna thank Queenie504 for being a part of this idea. And if you want to influence the channel and recommend things that you want to see, you should definitely check out the Discord. But today's topic is going to be top 10 underrated attractions at Disney World. Some people might think that something I pick is not underrated at all. Some people might feel that I'm missing something. So you know this is subjective and at the end I would love for you to leave a comment below if you agree disagree what you would include in your top 10 I love that kind of stuff so definitely let me know this is also in no particular order I'm not saying number one is the least or most underrated and 10 vice versa this is just me laying them all out but number one is an animal kingdom and it is dinosaur I think dinosaur was a hit when it first came out, and since has been woefully underrated. It's one of those thrill rides that, it might be the only thrill ride actually on my list that is underrated because I think it has sort of lost its appeal over time, and I'm not really quite sure why, but nine times out of 10, if you're in Animal Kingdom, it's not a big holiday. Dinosaur does not have more than a 20 to 30 minute wait. And, and this was something that was considered an e-ticket attraction for Animal Kingdom, one that people were going there for, much like Everest, um, now Flight of Passage. So it's actually kind of surprising to me that the popularity has died over time. Dinosaur is all kinds of creepy and that's definitely my kind of vibe. And I can see why maybe that would deter people from going on it, but I think that it still looks really good um, for considering when it came out. The animatronics are great. Um, they just did a recent refurb where the sound is updated, the fog and smoke and all of that. They added some extra little projections and things here and there. I do think that there are a couple of parts where it could be a little bit better, but overall, I think Dinosaur is a great, great ride and just doesn't get a lot of attention anymore. It could be the location in the park. I don't know. I would love to know what your thoughts, why you think that dinosaur just doesn't have the lines that it used to. Number two is also in Animal Kingdom. We're still hanging out around there and a lot of people disagree with me on this one. I know it already because it was also an unpopular Disney opinion. But I think my second underrated ride is Navi River Journey. I did an entire unpopular Disney opinion about how I actually think it's one of the best dark rides in the parks, I know, there's some of you are just like, what are you talking about? But hey, it's my channel, my opinion, right? <laughs> I will link that somewhere around here so you can go and yell at me if you like. But I think Navi River Journey is a fantastic ride. I think the only downfall is its length. It should be and could have been longer. I don't agree with the arguments that there's no story. There's definitely a story. It's not hitting you over the head with one. It's like many other dark rides where you kind of just have to figure it out as you go along. It's not like point A to point B, this character's here and then this happens here and then happily ever after. That's not how it works. It's more telling the story of the people of the Navi and their relationship with the plant life and the animals around them. And the whole shaman reveal is like really amazing and it builds up in music and in song to that moment. I think that there's a lot there it's an absolutely beautiful ride and I think right now I like I'm not basing all my underrated based on lines because obviously it still has long lines at times because it's still relatively new but I just think in terms of people's like thoughts and feels about it I think it is a better ride than people give it credit for and so that's why I feel like this one's underrated number three is living with the land I know there's a lot of us that love that ride but when you think about the general public it really is an underrated ride a lot of people go on living with the land because oh Soren's too long or something else is down and well I'm over here in the land pavilion anyway so let's just check out what this thing is but I noticed that a lot of people get off that ride and they don't seem to really get it they don't they don't they think yeah it's okay it was a fun little boat ride kept me entertained for however long it is 10 minutes maybe less I think living with the land is really amazing because it truly is showing you what Disney is doing in um, agriculture there actually are experimenting with things there while a lot of the stuff that we see has been kind of similar as we've gone through so a lot of people might think well this is just for show um, I can tell you as someone who did the 
behind the scenes tour, that's what it's called. Um, they really are doing a lot of active research and better ways to grow things. Um, and it's really, really fascinating. So I think living with the land is really underrated. It's a great ride, but it's also really informative about what Disney's actually doing. And I think it's really, really cool. Number four, also in Epcot is Grand Fiesta Tour with the three caballeros. Now, look, I liked the original ride. Um, I, I've always liked the ride in Mexico, and that's just been me. A lot of people call it just like a mini small world ripoff, but you know what? I think it's great. I think it's really fun. But when you added the three caballeros, I feel like it made it something a little bit better. Um, you know, there's a lot of complaints about IPs being added into things, but this is one of those situations where when they did it, I actually think it really helped the ride. Of course, I'm a big Donald fan, so maybe I'm biased here but I do think it is a very underrated ride. A lot of people don't even know it exists inside of Mexico. So again, it's one of those rides that unless it's a holiday, you can just walk on it most days. And it kind of makes me sad because I think it's such a really cool, fun ride. Um, and I wish more people would go to it. Number five is Phil Her Magic over in Magic Kingdom. Again, Donald is kind of the main character, so maybe again biased, but I love Phil Her Magic. Donald aside, I love the beautiful ride that we get to take through Renaissance classic Disney movies in this amazing widescreen, wider than widescreen, in 3D. And yes, I agree, there are certain scenes now where the 3D does not look as good as it used to. But I think that an attraction needing a refurbishment does not take away at it being a really great attraction at its core. And I do think that they did all of the scenes just beautifully. Oh, I love how Peter Pan goes into Aladdin. I always cry in the Peter Pan scene. Um, I love how you go from Little Mermaid to the Lion King. All those transitions are beautiful. I love how into it people get because they know all the songs. And I love the use of the theater. There's actually like physical things that happen in the theater. Kind of like one of my other on this list, but I'll get to that. Um, I think it's so, so good, and it makes me really sad that, again, it just doesn't get a lot of love. Number six, also in Magic Kingdom, is Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor. So good, so good, you guys. I think a lot of people just walk right by this. They don't even know what it is. They're just like, what the heck is that? Um, not a ride, just an attraction, a sit down attraction where you are actually dealing with improv comics who are being the monsters in the show um, that are so good at what they do. And, and I think the thing with this is that it can be hit or miss, right? Because it's improv, sometimes you're gonna have a very funny show, sometimes not so much. But I think that's kind of the fun of it and every show is unique and it's a lot of audience participation. I love that you can text in jokes to be featured. One of mine was once, it was very exciting. Um, and I just love that because of that nature of it being actual live improv comics, dealing with the audience, it just changes every single time. There is like that running that guy gag, which I still think is hilarious. Um, but for the most part, they really try to change it up and I think that it is such a fun time, such a good like, few minutes in the AC to relax and have a laugh and enjoy yourself. And I, again, I don't think it gets enough love, but I really do think that the people who work that attraction are really, really good at what they do. Number seven, we're still in Magic Kingdom. We haven't left yet. Not that this was actually in an order of parks, but that's just how this is going, is Tom Sawyer Island. Super underrated. Not enough people go out there and enjoy this, the quiet silence of Tom Sawyer Island until you run into a bunch of kids trying to go across the Bower Bridge. Not so silent anymore, but for the most part, it is such a great little adventurous area. I don't think a lot of people who like don't know the parks well know about it, so that's kind of part of its downfall. But, oh man, I love going out there, sitting in the rocking chairs, walking through the caves, going to the fort, doing the bridge, just seeing the rest of Magic Kingdom from that angle, like far away. And, seeing the steamboat, oh man, I think it's so great. And it's one of those things I neglected for a really long time. And then I finally went back and did it like two or three years ago. And now it's like, I wanna do it every time I'm there because I think that it doesn't get enough love. And I think that it's really, really neat. It's such a great addition to the park. It reminds me of how Disneyland Paris has a lot of stuff like that. And I actually very much enjoyed how much they had. And it's fun to have something like that in Disney World 
I just think more people need to do it. Number eight, I teased this one earlier, and if you knew what I was talking about, you know which one this is, but it is Muppet Vision 3D in Hollywood Studios. This ride has been the subject of a rumor for a very long time that is going to close. It's been a long time since that first rumor came out, and it's still a very realistic possibility. And it would make me very sad if it closed. I am always a proponent of change is good. I will never, um, you know, hold it against Disney for closing down anything. I adored Great Movie Ride, but I've moved on. It's okay, I'm excited for the next ride to come. Um, but I really don't want Muppet Vision 3D to disappear, but I think part of the reason it might, aside from some theming changes, is also just because it has not attracted an audience for a very long time. Uh, you can always walk right into that theater most times um, if you roll up right before the show, never really long wait to get in, and yet it's so good. It's so classic Muppets. Those jokes I still quote all the time. And again, like I said about PhilharMagic, it uses the theater itself so well to tell the whole story. You even have a live actor in there. Uh, I mean, and the penguins, oh, it's so good. It's such a good attraction. Again, I think it needs a little love in terms of like updating the 3D, like making it look better because those sorts of things do, the screens and stuff, they start to lose um, that ability to like project it the correct way. I don't wanna see it go, but unfortunately a lot of people don't go to it. And I think it's a very, very underrated attraction. And I think part of it is also because the newer generation does not know Muppets as well. I mean, we did have that Muppet movie a few years ago, um, but I just don't think that they, it resonates with them the same. We grew up, you know, with The Muppet Show, with um, Muppet Babies, and then all of the movies, and I think that it just hasn't been as relevant now, which kills me, because I think those characters are so, so great. Number nine, gonna trek back over to Animal Kingdom, and that was a little bit of hint there, trekking. It's the Animal Kingdom trails. I mean, all of the walking animal trails that you can do in the parks, from the ones in the hub area, to the tiger trail, to the gorilla trail. I think that most people overlook them. They just care about the attractions. They're like Safari, and Everest, and Flight of Passage, and Festival of the Lion King, Dinosaur and a Mount. Uh, you know, and that's it. Um, I think those trails are so, so good. They're so well taken care of. They're so well laid out. I enjoy it every time. The huge bats, I think they're in the, I want to say that they're in the gorilla trail. I might be wrong. I have to look that up. But those huge bats never fail to amaze me. Um, I just, I love it. And, and maybe that's a love of, of animals, and so that's why I enjoy doing that. But at the same time, you know, the safari is pretty popular. People love animals. They just don't realize if you just spend five minutes walking, you can see more, and you can see them even closer in some situations. Those gorillas, man, sometimes they come up right up to the glass, and it's really, really awesome, and I just don't think enough people uh, even know that they are there. And lastly, not least, Back to Magic Kingdom. It's one that I think a lot of us love, and I say us as in big Disney fans, but I think the general public just doesn't appreciate the way it needs to be. And it is the TTA. So I think a lot of people see the TTA as a boring ride that you just sit on for a few minutes, goes in a loop. What did I do? What was the point of that? TTA is lovely, you guys. First of all, it's the most relaxing ride, I think, in all of Disney World. I mean, who who doesn't want to be swept around all of Tomorrowland in a car with your friends and overlooking all of the cool things that are happening? You get an amazing view of them building Tron. That's cool. You get to go into Space Mountain. That's cool. You get to go above and into Buzz Lightyear. That's cool. I think a lot of people don't realize how amazing of an idea it was to be able to build this like moving attraction that tours you around that takes you into these things. Like it take, it's an it's it's a ride that goes into another ride. Like that's crazy. That's so cool. Why is that not cool to people? I don't know, <laughs> but I think it is such a great concept, such a great thing to ride. I think it's so so good. It's, you know, one of the reasons why our podcast is named after it. It's so good, and yet I think by the general public, highly underrated. I think that we all love it as like huge Disney nerds, but I think most other people just kind of bypass it. So those are my 10 most underrated attractions in Disney World. I would love to know what yours are. If you wanna give me a full 10, 
go for it. If you have one or two that you wanna nitpick that I mentioned, go for that too. Um, something that I didn't mention, add that as well in the comments below. If you like this video, then like it. If you like me, you should subscribe. I make videos every single week. Uh, you guys have been just so phenomenal. Just, I don't know, you just have. I don't know, I just wanted to say that. Nothing in particular, you guys are just phenomenal and you guys should know that and hear that all the time. Thank you so much for watching and as always, have a great rest of the day. Bye.